Hit high and deep to right. Pulled along the line, sailing to the corner, and it is gone. A home run. Todd Walker touches him on the Red Sox lead it one to nothing. They do something in their very first trip to the plate tonight in the very first inning off Hudson that they did not do at all in nine innings on August 11th. They come up with a hit out of the infield. And for the Red Sox, this is exactly how you want to start a game. Kind of settle this crowd down a little bit. Give some momentum to your ball club. You're playing in Oakland. Putting the pressure on them right from the very beginning. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Walker. Swinging a high fly ball right field. Die going back. Back to the wall. It's gone. A two-run homer for Todd Walker. And Boston has the lead in the seventh, four to three. How about that? His second home run of the ball game. Wow. Oh my goodness. He's seeing the ball like a beach ball. It doesn't matter who's out there, left-handed, right-handed. Hey, Grady may rethink his idea of, of sitting here. Maybe get Hernandez to swing at a pitch that's yours. A bump play. He got it down. Fair ball. That's the ball game. And a stunning finish. The A's. They win it. On a squeeze bunt in the 12th inning. How do you like that? Talk about a shocker. I don't think anybody in the ballpark was expecting that right there. You get a you get a sinker ball pitcher, Hernandez, a catcher of all guys, gets the ball down. All he had to do was get it down because Miller was playing way back. What an outstanding heads-up play by Ramon Hernandez. Guys almost never end up butting the ball when he gives that side, but last night Hernandez did. One hop to the right fielder, and that will get a run home. Guillen is in to score, and the Athletics are ahead, one to nothing, as Hernandez. Last night did it with the bunt. This time he gets the base hit. Right now, whatever it takes, that's what Hernandez is doing. That bad. That one hit in the left field. Ramirez way back there. Still going back. It's over his head. He bunt juggles the ball. Hernandez has scored. Die waves home. He scores. A two-run double for Eric Burns and three runs have scored for the Athletics. Two and one the count. Tejada would be next. That one grabbed by Walker. He drops it and then throws it away. And two runs will score. Burns scores and right behind him is Ellis. Chavez ends up at second. And Todd Walker with the one error dropping that ground ball and then compounding it with an extremely wild throw. That one is into right center field. Burns on the run. Still going. And it's over his head. Again, the ball traveling well. Mirabelli's going to score on a double by Damon. Runners at second and third. Two down. The, the big RBI man, Ramirez, at the plate. In the air to left center. On the move is Guillen. He, he reaches out and makes the catch. One strike left to the Red Sox. And a high pop-up. Tejada. And Oakland has gone ahead two games to none in this division series. One victory away from eliminating the Red Sox. This one could be two. Tejada boots it. He got ahead of himself and never picked it up. The Red Sox get a huge break. Long ball here. He's more of a little ball guy. Well, there's another opportunity here. And he went for the uh, the lead runner instead. Veritek. And Veritek is back. He was interfered with. He's going to be allowed to score. Interference on the base pass. Obstruction. And Veritek comes in to score. Another Oakland defensive mistake. Someone's going to be there, so be right there. Throw the ball. <laughs> That's the problem. You can't run and fake the throws. Season is over. Meanwhile, some of the guys from the dugout trying to get the fans to continue that uh, sarcastic lily cheer. See, I can do it. They got me into it. See, You're not down too old, though. 
Lou Maloney, Adrian Brown, scoring chance. Hit very softly. Low throws home, and that one is going to uh, allow the other runners to move up. As Burns shoved Jason Veritek, and Veritek goes over and tags him out. Burns never tagged the plate. Veritek chased that ball down after Burns shoved him and then ran back after him. Burns was limping after the collision at the plate, and he was tagged out. He does not score. Amazing. The other runners move up to third and to second. Watch this. This is a base hit. I mean, it's a swinging bunt. Now, Veritex right out in front. He blocks him off. And he, he does. He blocks him off. Now he goes and gets the ball. Now, Burns pushes him. But smart play by Veritek as he goes over and tags him. And a great call by the home plate umpire because he kept his eyes on the plate. Now watch here. He does not get to the plate. Great block there. And then he jams his ankle into the ground. And I'm sure the pain because he blocked him off and he pushes him. I'm not sure that that's not, that's not interference anyway. I mean, he should have been called out just for yeah, that. I mean, you can't just push the guy who's going after Derek Lowe. This time he swings away. Big trap. No more. Can't handle it. Well, now Tejada was obstructed by the well, third baseman, but I never saw a call. Well, Tejada stopped running, and Tejada has been tagged out. Now Mock is out. Third base coach Washington's out to get into the face of Bill Welke. But Tejada, after he collided with the third baseman, Bill Miller just stopped running, assuming that interference had been called well we saw this last year in the giants postseason play with jt snow the empire has got discussion yeah well maka has not gotten the word he wanted and on that very unlikely play this inning has ended one run did score to tie the game and apparently tejada is out Having been tagged out, the game is tied. Let's go to Gary Miller. On one of the more bizarre plays, you'll see the, the base hit bouncing past Garcia Parra. And then Tejada, who was being waved home by Washington, running into Bill Miller. And then as the throw came in, he stopped, feeling sure that obstruction was going to be called. But then he was tagged out. That's the play that stands. And try to get him, get the ball down, and hopefully he can get him to chase something. Tejada would be next. That's the best thing in the throw. center, but right to Damon. So Lowe gets through it. The Red Sox is still breathing. Millard trying to cowboy up. But it is Bradford who gets him. Same pitch. And the Red Sox, again, unable to get that big hit. Pretty because you have to pinch hit for someone. And then he's putting a and a call for a big fly. Hits it high in the air, deep to center. Burns is back at the warning track at the wall. It's gone! And the Red Sox have stayed alive with a win in the 11th. hit to left field one run is in now being way to nope Guillen's going to stop at third as the throw comes in needs to make a pitch here and as a pop fly backpedaling is Walker the infield fly rule is called so the out was automatic on that pop up as it turned at the moment another curveball and a pop up Milan he's there out number two oh and two that's why they came inside. Pops him up. And here's Bill Miller. And that's the inning. So John Burkett runs the gauntlet and survives it. Just, but he is leaving this game. Baracek ending up at third. 
That one is hit well in the right center field. Die looking back. It is into the bullpen. A two-run homer for Johnny Damon. And the Red Sox have gone ahead. Knuckleballer up in the bullpen. That is caught. A diving catch by Miller at third. That one is hit down the right field line. Nixon going back. And it's over his head. He's out in the sun field. And he could not get it. Heading home is Hatterberg. Here comes the throw, and it's too late. Hatterberg scores. And all the way to third goes Mel Hughes. Adam Mel Hughes in his postseason debut is three for three and the score is tied catch by Todd Walker his last time that curve is hit toward the wall high and deep and way out of here I'll say it again that's the guy you want up there he's been an RBI man and he knows what he's supposed to do in those situations Jermaine die with a long home run and it is four to two Oakland die has driven in three of those four runs Leading last of the sixth. Going back is Jermaine Dye. Still going back. And that ball is gone. Todd Walker has hit another home run against Rincon. So just like that, Boston gets one of them back. Four to three, Oakland. Well, the ball's really carrying well in that area. That's where Damon hit his ball. When he first hit it, I thought it might be in the gap, but it just kept going and going. He had a very similar kind of a record. That one is hit well. Left center field. That ball is off the wall. Burns plays the carom as Nomar is standing at second with a double. Boston's best RBI man at the plate. Oakland's best relief pitcher on the mound. And a base hit could tie this game. Curve ball. That's into left field. Guillen's got the strong arm. He's in shallow left. They're going to hold him up. Man. And it's a good thing they did. Now that wasn't going to be close at the plate. And Nomar almost ran through the sign. Because he was being held up from the moment he rounded third. And Gian was hoping that he would go. There goes Ramirez. That ball is hit well. Deep to right. Die. Can't get to it. Off the wall. One run is in. Here comes Ramirez. And the throw goes right to the middle of the infield. And Boston has gone ahead on the first hit of the series by David Ortiz. And it came at a big time. Five to four, Boston. Third shutout innings. Seven strikeouts. Make it eight. He has struck out three in a row, including Die to end the eighth inning. Garajo, who drove in the tying run in game one in the ninth inning. Bill Miller in shallow left. He's got it. And the Red Sox have tied the series. They're going to head to Logan. For the flight to Oakland and a game five with Pedro and Zito. The Red Sox have risen from the dead. Lined in the right center field, a base hit. That ball will go to the wall. Rounding third. And 
scoring is Hatterberg on the third. Guillen throw there. He is out at third. But not before Jose Guillen has broken this scoreless game. Yes, he did. And he's mighty creative out on that man. 3-2. Launched into left field. We may have a tie game. We do have a tie game. Veritek, his second home run of the series. I don't know how many teams, Tommy, have their number nine hitter with career-high 25 home runs, 85 RBIs from that spot. Veritek, another one of those guys that shaved his head in unison. A new ball game. Got that right. And Manny lifts one into deep left center field. Guillen back at the wall. Goodbye. And Ramirez walking to first base and pointing to his teammates. Manny Ramirez, Ramirez here saying, let's start a new postseason tradition with that home run. That's what they're used to seeing out of him. I have never seen more reason you got to do this. Ramirez is showing his emotion of getting back into being the hitter that he is, but this is a bad thing to do. You do not need to wake up the big. He approaches this at bat. Line into right center field. This will score DeRazzo. On an extra base hit by Tejada. His second RBI of the series, and it's a two-run game. Fans in Boston, too, I can tell you yeah, that. that. there are. Off the end of the bat into short center field. Damon coming on. Damian Jackson going out. They collide. And the ball is dropped. Throw in the second, and they still got the runner. But Damon and Jackson both down in short center field. Both running at nearly full speed, and check out this wreck. Oh, head on head. I mean, it's so tough to communicate out there. It seemed like you could tell neither one of them was saying anything. Both guys going after that ball, neither of them saying anything because neither of them were sure they could get to it. Damian Jackson wants to go back out there. He is very concerned about it. And now a few of the fans apparently uh, giving it to Damian Jackson over behind that Oakland dugout. But much more importantly, we... Uh, well, now all of a sudden, uh, some of the Boston players having to be restrained from going into the dugout or going into the stands, I beg your pardon. I don't know if it was just some unruly fans saying some things, some disrespectful things to the Red Sox players as they came off the field or if something was thrown. A couple of the Red Sox were pointing out a few of the fans saying that these guys should be ejected. Now there's a fan right there that's being restrained by a policeman. Damian Jackson was looking out toward his teammates. And certainly his concern for Johnny Damon. And then some of the words started from the stands. Jackson giving it back to him. Yeah, fellas, what happened, David Ortiz was kind of leading a round of applause for Damian Jackson. A few of the Red Sox fans had started to cheer, seeing the fact that Damian was apparently okay. There was one fan that then gave it to David Ortiz. I'm not sure what the fan said, but Ortiz then reacted that the fan would have something at all to say about applauding a man who's apparently all right after a collision that violent, and, and that's when the fracas began over there. See, the guy in the yellow visor is the guy that was then taken out of the stadium by security. Of our hearts, our thoughts and prayers, as Johnny Damon raises his hand and the crowd standing and applauding. That's a, a very good sign.
But our thoughts and prayers go out to Johnny Damon. We hope he's okay. If we hear anything, we'll let you know as soon as we can. Their bullpen has been much, much better. Hold in the right field, a base hit. They're going to wave around Singleton. He will score, and the A's within a run. Day night. Check swing and a miss, and that'll do it. So here we go. They're ready in Oakland as Williamson comes on from the pen, and they're ready in Boston. Drive from there to get the plane of the fastball down in the strike zone. And he has walked Hatterberg to lead off the bottom of the ninth inning. Williamson nowhere close to the strike zone. Three and two, runner going again. Ball four up and in. Bear in mind, Scott Williamson, and you talk about play at third. And it is put down perfectly by Ramon Hernandez. Tying run to third. The series winning run goes to second. Run around at home where Trot Nixon's playing right now. Strike three, call. Derek Lowe. Just two strikes. Pitch on the way is ball four, and they are loaded. Base is loaded, one two pitch. Strike three called, and the Boston Red Sox have come from behind, trailing two games to none, winning three in a row, and they will meet the Yankees on Wednesday night in the American League Championship Series. Two years ago to slam the door in game five in the bottom of the ninth inning to beat the Athletics four to three and win the series three games to two. Mike, Mike Timlin brought it up. Kevin Millar brought it to all of New England. And Derek Lowe just cowboyed up. Three league championship series. The reaction of the Boston bench, Derek Lowe. The same pitch that struck out Mel Hughes. Run it in, get it to come back. And the celebration is on in Beantown. I believe they're celebrating in New York. This is a series Yankee fans want, the series Boston fans want. Let's go downstairs and join Josh Lewis.